how would we describe the Quran? <coughs> it's a practical and effective instructions. Is that right? I, I, what did I say? I said it was a, actually, a, we said it's not a textbook, but it is a manual, a handbook. You know, that's what we said. It's a, so, so it's a manual, it's a handbook, all right? And um, so I call it practical and effective instructions. Okay? Um, you know, you might be wondering, uh, I don't see much DIY there. But it is, you know, when it says, Believers seek help through patience and prayer. Isn't that a clear DIY? Do it. <laughs> Be patient and get on with praying, okay? Did you see that? So it is actually very practical and effective. In Allah is with those who are patient. To, just to do the further encouragement. You know, six words. And you've got the whole you know, solution to some of the most serious problems that human beings face. Eh? <coughs> so the other thing is, it's a medicine. What does a medicine do? What would you say a medicine does? <coughs> Atiyah, what's a medicine for? Cure. Sorry? Cure. Cure. Of cure of? An of an illness. To cure an illness, to overcome a sickness. And Allah says about the Quran, uh, shifa nas. In it is a healing for people. In fact, it says shifa ullima fi sudur in another place. That it is a healing for the sicknesses of the heart and mind. No, sickness of sick, healing for the sicknesses of the heart and mind, which is really important. In other words, to do with your cognitive thinking and with your emotions. Your mind, effectively, it heals your mind. You know, so uh, you know the, 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 the uh, and, and and that is one of I, I've sort of explained that as for moral, spiritual, and social ills. Do you do you understand that? So, what would be a moral ill or moral sickness? I, I talked about four moral. Yes, sister, there. What are the four moral, uh, big moral vices we talked about? Anger. Come on, now I've got. Our, what else? Jealousy. Jealousy. What are the spiritual illnesses? <coughs> what is the biggest spiritual illness? Love of material things instead of Allah. That's the biggest idolatry, shirk. That is where everything begins, actually. That is where everything, the love of the world, material things. Spiritual is actually about loving Allah and going away from the so it has a, and, and as we said, you know, the Quran is all about how you connect with Allah. Why you connect with Allah? Because He's so powerful, He's so great, He's such an amazing creator. Eh? Therefore, you want to be with Him. You want to be submitting to Him. So the spiritual uh, is that. And, and social illnesses are, you know, really when we are unjust, when we do injustice to others, when we don't care about others, we are callous, uh, you know, we, don't, we, we, we really don't care about others' rights. That's social ills. And there's, you know, beginning with parents, relatives, friends, neighbors, and, and citizens, and, and of course, the environment, okay? You can be very uh, uh, callous about the environment, eh? You know, the, the people who sort of just want to chop down all the forests, eh? Uh, and, and, and so on. Those are being, you know, those are our social illnesses. Do you agree with that? Yeah. So I hope you can see it's a medicine, shifa, the Quran calls itself. It's a shifa. It's a book of guidance. And guidance, you know, I, I, you know uh, I've written an article on what is guidance. It's a really derived from Ibn Jawzi's uh, 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 definition of guidance. Uh, and it's really very pithy if you really want to. I, I spent a lot of time on what is guidance. So if you want to read, this is just about eight, nine hundred words. If you write to me, I will inshallah send you what is guidance and you will then see how the Quran is a book of guidance. <coughs> it's Rahma. You know, this is one of the definitions Allah gives of the Quran that it is Rahma. Rahma. Everybody say that? Rahma. Rahma. What does Rahma mean? Rahma in the Quran has about 16 different meanings. The rain is Rahma. Hey? <laughs> the rain is Rahma. Okay? 
and, and uh, you, know, you know the our old translators just love to use blessing, blessing. What is blessing for God's sake? Tell me what is a blessing there, no? It doesn't mean blessing everywhere, okay? And it's, a, it's almost like, oh, you're nice, nice, everything is nice, everything. What, is, what do you mean nice? What does it mean? Tell me. Eh? Same thing with blessing, you know, it's, it's wrong, it's not right to use. So I've started using the word beneficial. It benefits you, it's of benefit to you, okay? It's useful to you, okay? It's Allah's kindness, Allah's way of treating you kindly. Slightly better than just blessings, isn't it? And as I say, the Mufassirin give all these different meanings of the word Rahma, okay? So it is actually a beneficial book. It is a very useful book. Is that okay, everybody? So that's just recapping what we did yesterday about... Um, <coughs> Ah. <laughs> what do we mean by this? Anybody like to tell us it is a mirror? The Quran is a? What happens in the mirror? You see yourself. You see? So what should we be doing? We should be looking for ourselves in the Quran. In fact, the Quran makes that claim, you know, and, and uh, in, in the next uh, slide. You know, the Quran makes that claim, yeah, no? And here is a nice story about Nazzalna ilaykum al kitab fihi zikruku. Nahnu nazzalna alayk al kitab fihi zikruku. We sent down a book, and in it, you are mentioned. In it, you are mentioned. Tasib, you mentioned. So, Ahnaf ibn Qais, one of the great Tabis, when he was teaching his students, he said, I'm mentioned in the Quran. If Allah says that, it must be true, wasn't it? It's true. So where am I? So he started his, you know, told his students, get the Mus'haf, you know. Let's go through. Read one verse, another verse, you know, he says, where Allah describes people, okay? Describes the believers. Uh, you know, let's say, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لَا غِمُورِدُونَ Seven qualities are mentioned there of a believer, okay? And then, Ibadul Rahman al Yamshuna al Ard, the servants of Allah, those who walk humbly and do this, this, this. And then, Inna al Muslimina wal Muslimat wal Mu'minina wal Mu'minat wal Qanitina wal Qanitat, the believers are those who truly believe, they are humble, so and so. You know, 11 qualities there. Inna Allah hashtara min al Mu'minina wal Muslimat. All these, and he says, no, you know, this, these are two nice guys. I can't be like that. This isn't me. And then he comes to, eventually to Surah <coughs> Mulk, you know, where there is Ya Tarifuna, they acknowledge that they have weaknesses, that they have done wrong to God, okay? And he says, stop, that's me, okay? For I, and do you see what he's trying to get his students to think about? So where, you know, the, 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 the Quran describes you, or where it describes the true believers, what should you be seeing? Well, you should be then assessing yourself, shouldn't you? And saying, oh, where do I stand here? Evaluate yourself. Isn't that right? Hassan is it? Uh, Hassanen, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, you should be then evaluating yourself. Oh, you know, <coughs> so there's seven qualities here. Qad aflah al mu'minun. This is the beginning of Surah. Uh, al Mu'minun, the believers are really successful. Who? Those who are khashi'un in their prayers, very focused and engaged in their prayers, truly focused. And then you can ask yourself, Am I really, do I engage in my prayers properly? Am I focusing them or not? And then, you know, uh, they are pure people, the Quran says. Uh, they are people uh, who, um, uh, who, who are very generous. And then you begin to ask, Have I been generous? Have I given freely, freely, without expecting anything and without, you know, um, being asked for it as well? Just give, you know, shouldn't be asked, I should, should be so free and a great spirit. Do I have that? Are you with it? This is how we should study the Qur'an, don't you, don't you think? That is why I said it's, you know, it's an effective manual. It's that mirror in which you see yourself. Is that right? You, you're happy with that? Yeah. So we use it as a mirror, inshallah. That story I've written up, if anybody wants to read that, I'll get Yeah, this is just to help you when, you, when we open the, um, 
I, I'll stand on this side because I'm blocking some people's view. Are you okay? Can you see it? So, um, yeah, it's. Um, this is, you know, the uh, old our books of um, um, hadith and uh, of um, teachers give us how to come to the Quran. How do you come to the Quran? All right. Well, first thing you do is you seek Allah's protection. We said to you, you know, uh, what, what do we do? Say, "A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim." You know, this the rejected shaitan is trying to get you trapped into the world, and you want to escape that. So that's the first thing. So that, that's the intention. So when you come to the Quran, you know, this is being very conscious and aware. I hope you can see what, what I'm demanding is really a high order of awareness, wakefulness, mindfulness. And we seldom do, I think, 10% of that. You know, we just open. You know, I'm just going to read. I'm going to read a safaya. I want lots of uh, merits in, in the Akhirah. Not worried about what is it saying to me, isn't that right? And and, and that's where you know you need to come out of that. So there's nothing wrong. With of course, yeah. For of course, yeah. No, there's no. Of course, you need those hasanat. <coughs> but but you see, uh, just doing it um, in a in, in in a very flippant manner, almost um, ma a manner that is, um, I would say, not. Uh, fit for Quran to be honest you know you, you should come to the Quran with but this is my guide this is a book that's gonna lead to my salvation all right you know, shouldn't be interested in a few merits there and a merit point heart and mind what do I mean by change that? for it good yeah that's right yeah, it's, it's being uh, you know um, ready to listen and and let the Quran speak to you let the Quran yeah, we seldom do that. And of course, the translations you have hardly give you that opportunity anyway. Okay? And, and so this is why having a plain English with ready-made sections for you to reflect. Dr. Shiv, do, do, do you agree with that? You don't have to now worry about, can, how, do I, how do I make sense of this? It's there for you. It's ready. You know? So come with an open heart and mind. Listen carefully. What is listening carefully? mean and why is that different from just hearing? Yeah, Dr. Stone? I was just going to say, it's, 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 it's all very well to open the, the Quran, read the translation, listen to it, but actually understand is hearing what that translation is and what yes. it actually means for you to reflect and accept. Yes, that's right. And, and what you will find when you, when you do this very careful listening, to be honest, the Quran is no f deep philosophy. It's very simple. Come to Allah. Eh? It's just an open book. And I, I can, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, if we were good in English and we did a good job of our book, I can assure you, a key stage two ch child of eight, nine year old of average ability, Naveed, you're a head teacher, you will know what sort of, to be honest, could understand it. Seriously. There's nothing, you know, nothing, and then that's what makes it very u unique. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ Okay? Seriously, that is the level you, you, you have to, you know. Um, that doesn't mean that for very brilliant and intelligent people there isn't. Of course, you know, it has layers and layers of meanings and linkages. And, and you know, because the Quran uses a lot of figurative language, what's beauty about a figurative language? Well, figurative language, every one of you will t interpret it in his own way. You will understand it and see it according to your own ability. So the master in philosophy will see this in, some, in another way. And a, uh, a, you know, somebody doing his um, key, st key stage two sats, you know, 11 year old child will see it in his, understand it at his own level. You know, that is the miracle of the Quran, to be honest. Yeah and respond appropriately. That's really important. Reply. Respond means, and you know Allah says, Ya aman nustajibu lillahi wal, wal Believers, respond to Allah when He calls to you. So Allah is calling you here. Allah is speaking to you. Are you saying yes or no? And this is why, you know, when you're reading the Quran, you should be saying yes, na'am, no, yes, you know, and responding 
appropriately crying and, and showing your desire for carrying out those beautiful deeds. So you must respond. Okay, those are, so I just summarized, you know, these are etiquettes of uh, Quran reading, you know, and there's books and books on it, mashallah, but I summarized those.